Welcome back. In this video, I'll be epoxy coating some bulkheads, frames, and the two stringers. As you can see from this brief intro montage, the full size boat is too large for me to take out all of the bulkheads, frames, and the stringers and epoxy coat them at once. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'll use some footage from Dan Lee's epoxy coating video to show you how it should be done ideally and then we'll compare it to what I'm actually doing on this full-size temptress build. So let's start with the reason for epoxy coating. So dimensional stability is really at the core of everything that is designed into the process of building this boat. Key element to that is going to be epoxy coating and that is what we're doing in this video. Every single piece of timber within this boat is going to be completely encapsulated with epoxy. So what we want to do is create a complete barrier that's not going to let any water ingress into the wood. And by doing that we also improve our dimensional stability. So we are aiming to completely encapsulate every piece on this boat. Now, the reason for doing that at this stage is that we can do that really thoroughly without having to worry about trying to work inside the boat and get into every little tiny nook and cranny. This is going to be the kind of preliminary epoxy sealing stage, so a lot of these parts they're still going to have exposed edges where we've still got work to do on them, but what we're going to aim to do here is to coat um, most of the parts of it that we won't be able to easily access when we do this um, finally within the boat. Okay, so I'm gonna dot through a handful of uh, things. I'm not gonna show you coating everything because it's uh, much the same as the frame building process. Um, once I've shown you one frame, they're pretty much all the same as that. Wait, I thought you liked my 10 frame gluing videos. So we've got frame one here. We've got our bulkhead, which is separate from our main frame component. We wanna keep those separate for now. And uh, those will get paired up when we put all of this stuff back in the boat and we do a final glue up. So there's a couple of things we want to do here. Um, just generally clean up, you know, I've got a little bit of glue on here from when I uh, glued up the keel and the chines. So we just want to be cleaning up things like that. I cleaned up my frames with an orbital sander and I didn't do a really good job of rounding the edges. My primary goal was to remove any of the prior cured epoxy to ensure that the amine blush wouldn't cause adhesion problems with the new layers of epoxy. So the finish that we're actually going to use on the inside of Temptress will be a varnished finish. We could go for like a satin varnish just to kind of dull things down a little bit. But the, um, the epoxy clear coat is going to form the base of that phase. So what you need to remember if you're, um, if you're coating the, anything within the boat at this stage, um, once you've coated it, that's how that part is going to look when it is within the boat. So. For that reason, I wanted to test out some spirit-based dyes on the plywood that would be visible. We're going to try out two different stains. They're both spirit-based stains or spirit-based wood dyes. And one's a rich mahogany and one's a natural sapili. So. I want to see how they look on the sapili, and I want to see how they look on the plywood. The reason I'm doing this is that I did not buy good plywood. It is marine plywood, but I'd like to make it a little bit darker in the bulkheads that are going to be seen. So I just want to see which one of these is the right stain. So I'm trying it out on some scrap material. I start with the natural sapili wood dye. So that, that's the sapili. You can definitely smell the alcohol. Now for the rich mahogany. Well, I like this rich mahogany. It reminds me of the plum mahogany that Dan Lee used in his missile. So I'm gonna have to make a call on this. But I'm not gonna make it right now. You'll see what I do in the end. Okay, so this is roughly what we're looking to achieve here with uh, each individual frame. So I've got everything cleaned up, all the faces and stuff are nice and uh, how I want them to look basically in the finished boat. 
And then we just want to slightly denib all of these corners. So we're just rounding these off and that's just going to help us to get a good epoxy coating and a seal all the way around that part without the risk of, um, of breaking through any corners when we're, when we're sanding. While I cleaned up the frames, I definitely did not put a nice rounded edge on the gussets or the frame boards themselves. Now bear in mind that um, we've still got work to do on this frame. So we've got um, top side battens to set into the outsides of the frame. We've got um, things to bevel when we set the chines in and stuff like that. So there's still gonna be work to do on the outer perimeters of this. So our sort of focus for the epoxy coating stage at the moment is really just on internal sections. So we'll do each face of the uh, of the frames and certainly focus on any areas that we may not be able to um, get good access to once the boat is together. We've also got the bulkhead so there's um, you know edges to consider where there's going to be um, you know where you're going to see things so like this clearance hole through here we just want a nice rounded inside edge to that so that we can get a good epoxy coverage around there without breaking through the corner. Same with the top side of the um, of the bulkhead as well. So I removed some of the bulkheads for sanding, but left the larger ones in place and sanded on the strong back. So that's roughly where we want to be with our first frame. That process is going to pretty much follow on for every other frame. So same kind of thing. We want to be rounding the insides, neating everything up, and um, we'll get these little holes filled as well. So we'll do that on a few other frames, and then um, we'll look at a different component as well. Either that stringer is tiny, or Dan Lee climbed down a beanstalk to get to his workshop. I did not sand the stringers, and as you'll see, I epoxy coated the inside surface of the stringers prior to cutting the frame notches. So our primary focus for epoxy coating at the moment is gonna be internal faces. So faces that are gonna be viewed from inside the boat, any area of wood which is potentially gonna be covered up as we do an assembly, and things that are gonna be a struggle to, uh, to reach. Much the same with the stringers, internal faces. So this is the edge that's gonna be seen from inside of the boat. And we wanna do both of the sides as well. One thing to bear in mind with epoxy coating, uh, as I said at the start of the video, we're looking to create a barrier that is gonna keep moisture out of the timber and stop those fluctuations. Now on the same vein, what we also don't wanna be doing is trapping moisture inside the timber because it's gonna do that just as well as it's gonna keep it out. So it's quite critical for us to make sure that the timber is in a correct state before we completely encapsulate it. Now with these parts, we're doing the first stage of encapsulation. So there are still gonna be exposed edges on these parts, but we still really wanna make sure that they are um, suitable to do that with. We don't wanna risk trapping moisture in the timber at this time. We're gonna check it with a moisture meter. So I bought a moisture meter, but on the dry wood, I kept getting a 0% reading. So I moved it to a wet board just to see if it worked at all. Before epoxy coating the frames, I filled the frame construction board guide holes with colloidal silica thickened epoxy. I also filled any gaps between the gussets and the frames. Now we're ready for the first coat of epoxy. Just using a small brush, definitely recommend a brush for the initial application just so you can really work it into that surface. So 
So I'm using the West System 207 Special Clear Coating Hardener for this. Uh, that really is the product that you want to be using for this job. You could use the standard um, West System Epoxy for this with the, um, the slow or the fast hardener because all of this is going to be internal within the boat. Um, it doesn't actually need a great deal of UV resistance because most of this that we're doing here is not going to be directly exposed to sunlight. But the uh, special clear hardener does actually contain UV inhibitors. So um, it's going to give you a little bit of extra protection in the instance when um, some of this might be exposed, which certainly isn't going to do any harm. The other benefit to using this uh, version of the epoxy is that it doesn't blush. So you don't get the amine blush that comes out when you use the, uh, the standard epoxy and then leaves that waxy film on the surface. So that's going to be a little bit problematic trying to clean that up in um, all of these kind of fiddly areas. So um, I'd recommend using the 207. It's just going to make your life a lot easier for this process. While my prior look of black socks and slippers did not start a fashion trend, I'm confident this hat will. Okay, so there's a look at frame one. So you can see again, all internal faces. Haven't focused too much on the outside because we're gonna be reworking those, but I've even done the inside face. So where this is gonna mate up to the bulkhead when we glue it up, it doesn't hurt to get this completely sealed now. And then um, when we glue the two together with a thickened epoxy, we know that we're not gonna have a dry joint there. So that's a really good uh, measure to go to. And here you can finally see that I chose a natural sapili stain for the two visible bulkheads. I may still choose a plum mahogany for the outside stain on the boat, but for the inside I wanted the best match to the natural sapili lumber. Notice that I've worked around the strong back legs with both the stain and the epoxy coating. After the boat is flipped, I'll come back and stain those areas and again, coat them with epoxy. There's a typical bulkhead, so I've literally done every single face on that. Anything that's exposed, even if we're gonna be slightly reworking these chine landings, that's not gonna hurt at all. So. Um, you guys know what plywood's like, you want to make sure it's really well sealed because the edges of it are just like little straws that are going to wick up water. So we want to make sure that's really well covered all faces. epoxy coat the full size stringers, I went right to the roller.
Because my stringers were not perfectly smooth, I got into the cracks with a brush. Okay, so this is one coat of epoxy on here. What we want to do here is to do three coats on everything, and there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, firstly, the, uh, the first coat is going to start to absorb in a fair amount, particularly in plywood, which is quite an absorbent timber in comparison to solid wood. Secondly, uh, for coverage, we want to make sure that we've definitely covered every face completely. So if you've missed tiny little bits on one coat, you'll catch them on the next coat. The chance of you completely missing something um, for three consecutive coats in a row hopefully is quite slim if you're pretty thorough with the way you're working. So we want to be doing three coats. We'll do that wet on wet. So we'll let this coat set up until it's uh, sellotape tacky and we're not going to disturb it when we apply the second coat. Then we'll put the second coat straight on top of that same again with the third coat. So we'll do three in a row, all in the same day, within a window so that it's not fully cured. So we get a good chemical bond between all three coats. For the second and third coats of epoxy, I use a brush along the edges, and then I use a roller on the bulkhead surfaces. Due to personal conflicts, I was not able to do all three coats in the same day. And if I'm really honest, I lost track of how many coats I had on each part. So some parts probably had two coats and some parts probably had four coats. Okay, so that is an overview of the epoxy coating process and uh, how we're gonna do things with Temptress. With the coating process complete, I bond the bulkhead to frame one, and then we install it back onto the strong back. And finally, we reinstall all of the epoxy coated bulkheads onto the strong back. In the next video, we'll make final height adjustments and bond the two stringers into the bulkheads. Until next time, cheers.